That day when he, the bus driver asked me to get up, I had this feeling come over me. It felt like Harriet Tubman was holding me down, hands were holding me down on one shoulder, and so John of Truth hands were holding me down on another shoulder. And I was glued to the seat, and I could hear the white passioners saying, she got to move, she got to move. That's the law, she got to move. And I felt like this is my time to take a stand for justice. Today, Claudette Colvin is known for standing up for her rights by refusing to give up her bus seat to a white passenger nine months before Rosa Parks. Claudette Colvin didn't just take a stand. She wasn't chosen by anyone. She did it all on her own, but doing that came with the price of not being able to follow her dreams and goals she originally had planned in life. Claudette Colvin was born on September 5, 1939 in Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery is the capital of Alabama. It was a city where African Americans and whites were separated from each other, and the African Americans were not treated fairly. You couldn't try on clothes in the department store. You had to know your right sizes, and you couldn't try on shoes. Forget it. My, uh, I remember call my mother uh, when Easter holiday come. You know, everybody wanted to dress up, and it would, to get the black patent leather shoes, she had to go and draw our di the diagram of our feet on a brown paper bag and take it to the store so she could get the exact size. Couldn't try on shoes in the store. And you couldn't drink out the water fountain. There was a color water fountain and a white water fountain in the apartment store. Her family didn't own a car, so she relied on the city's public buses to get her to and from school. But that didn't keep her from studying hard in school, earning mostly A's, and aspiring to become a lawyer someday. Claudette Colvin attended Washington High School, and at that time, they were studying African American history. On March 2, 1955, Colvin was riding home from school on one of Montgomery's public buses. Claudette Colvin and a few of her classmates were sitting in the middle of the bus, reserved for African Americans. Though it was reserved for African Americans, once the white section of the bus would get filled up, the white people had the right to take the seats in the middle, and the African Americans would have to move to the very back. Soon, a white lady boarded the bus. The bus driver yelled back, telling the students to get up and move to the back of the bus so that the white lady could take their place. Although her classmates obeyed the bus driver and frighteningly moved to the back, Colvin sat there as her African American history lessons came to life and she responded with, it's my constitutional right to sit here as much as that lady. I paid my fare, it's my constitutional right. I was paralyzed in my seat because it was, I was so intrigued about So John of Truth and Harriet Tubman, these was African American, two African American women. I say it felt like Harriet Tubman was pushing me down, hands were pushing me down on one shoulder. And so John the Truth was pushing me down on another show. That's why I didn't, why I couldn't move when the bus driver asked me to get up. So, and then I wasn't breaking the law. The segregation, I wasn't sitting in the white section. But in order to uh, Jim Crow law, the bus driver could ask you to get up. Well, any, any white person in authority could ask you to do something without really reason. You know, not in uh, not in keeping with the law. That's why the law is considered uh, they call it Jim Crow because it's like they make up their own rules. Claudette Colvin was then arrested by two police officers for several charges, including violating the city's segregation laws, disorderly conduct, and assault. Later that night, her mother and her minister bailed her out of jail. Colvin then went home where she and her family stayed up all night out of concern for possible revenge from the white Americans in town. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as the NAACP, considered using Colvin's act to challenge the segregation laws, but they decided against it because of the fact that her father mowed lawns, 
Her mother was a maid, and though they were church-going people, they lived in King Hill, Montgomery's poorest neighborhood, and that would not make a good impression on the African Americans. Other black leaders accused her of being too young and too dark-skinned to be an effective symbol of injustice for the rest of the nation. Later that summer, as local civil rights leaders continued to debate whether or not her act was worth challenging against the segregation laws, news came that Colvin was pregnant with a married man. Many black leaders, including Rosa Parks, raised money for Colvin's defense. At that time, local black leaders thought that Colvin's act was appropriate to share with the United States Supreme Court as a part of having a larger effort to overturn segregation laws. But Colvin was pregnant with a much older married man. Local black leaders felt that this transgression would not only scandalize the deeply religious black community, but they felt that the white press would manipulate Colvin's pregnancy. On May 11, 1955, Colvin testified in a Montgomery, Alabama court about her act on the bus back in March. On June 5, 1956, the district court ruled that segregation on the bus is unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment for equal treatment. The case went to the United States Supreme Court, which upheld their ruling on December 19, 1956. She was the last witness to testify and was considered the star witness. Three days later, the Supreme Court notified Montgomery that bus segregation would end. In 1958, Colvin left Alabama for Bronx, New York, where she worked the night shift at a Catholic nursing home. Although Colvin had dreams of becoming a lawyer and claims she's disappointed that never happened, she feels proud of what she did. I do feel like what I did was a spark, and it caught on, Colvin says. Because Claudette Colvin stood up for her rights on the bus and was known as the bad girl to most people, she paid the price of not being able to become a lawyer. But what Colvin did have was the courage to make change in America.